All right, all right, all right. Welcome again, brothers and sisters, this morning. Yes, sir. This is Mr. the Black Man. I'm your host, Brother Shabazz, along with my co-host this morning, Mr. Shakur. Yes, sir, brothers and sisters. We've been listening to some John Legends. Yes, sir. Django Unchained. Nice song, nice song. And the further ado, brothers and sisters, we're going to get right on with our program this morning. All praise is due to the Son of Man who came here in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. Remembering the first and last messenger of Master Farah Muhammad, the person of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, peace be upon him forevermore. And we thank the honorable Elijah Muhammad for the honorable Silas Muhammad, the man with the plan, the man who went to the UN on our behalf, putting us on the world stage. Been there for 17 years, him and Queen Mashaka Muhammad and entourage went over there helping the black man, woman, and child, fighting for your human rights, fighting for an identity for the black man, woman, and child here in the United States of America. I give great honor to the 24 black Islamic scientists this morning, the 12 major and the 12 minor black Islamic scientists. I have an announcement to make this morning. Yes, sir, brothers and sisters, the Honorable Silas Muhammad's birthday and anniversary. Yes, sir, it would be Tuesday. Yes, sir. It would be June 21st. Him and Queen Mashaka Muhammad be married. It would be his 84 year being on the planet Earth and 58 year anniversary of the Honorable Silas Muhammad and Queen Mashaki Muhammad. And I'm asking this morning for brothers and sisters, you all can donate to the Lost Found Nation of Islam. Make payable to the Lost Found Nation of Islam, P.O. Box 667, Red Oak, Georgia 3027. I'm asking for donations. For the lost found nation of Islam under the leadership of the Honorable Silas Muhammad. He's the only man that went to the UN on your behalf. Like I told you all last month now. Malcolm X wanted to go to the UN. He didn't make it. Because he saw that prophecy that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told him. That the next man coming after him will be going to the UN. And Malcolm thought he would be that next man that would go to the UN. But it was not so. Because the nation of Islam had to fall. And by falling, the next man did stand, and you all have witnessed this now, him going to the UN. The Honorable Silas Muhammad, along with his wife, Queen Mashanki Muhammad, went there and spent 17 years there on your behalf now, not just a Muslim, but all of black people, and brought together 250 ex slave descendant million now, 250 million of ex slave descendant of Abraham C. now. That were scattered and brought them back together, united them under one name called Afro Descendant. And brothers and sisters, I'm saying to you all once again, make all money orders payable to the Lost Found Nation of Islam, P.O. Box 667, Red Oak, Georgia, 30272. And I'm asking this morning, send a man some money, whether you like him or not, but his work stands for itself. Send him $1,000. All right? Send him $500. Send him 100 These are tax dedu- dedu- de- excuse me, deductible on your behalf now. Send him some money. Because there ain't nobody else that went to the UN on your behalf now. Let me know who went there and spent 17 years other than the Honorable Silas Muhammad on your behalf. Got you a name after the center where you want to recognize the name, but not the name is there. And... The General Assembly adopted and ratified the name in 2006, brothers and sisters. So I'm just putting it out there for you all. We've been putting it out there for a long time concerning that. And those of you who might want to check out our program, you can go to YouTube and type in the surgeon, the message of the black man radio broadcast, and you can listen to our programs right there. And also, brothers and sisters, I will say this much before I bring on Brother Minister. There's a lot been going on now out here in the United States, and I have told you guys, don't get distracted with white world politics. I know that you get involved with it. Uh, oftentimes, you can't help but to acknowledge it and look at it, examine it, but don't let it overwhelm you, whereas that's all you do because you have your own world politics you have to deal with. And there are certain things I want to say right quick. I'm going to bring on Brother Minister. There were three major things that has taken place now, Okay. I know you all been checking out the gun laws. Now, that's a distraction. That's all distraction. All right? One of the major events that took place is concerning American Sovereignty Restoration Act. Let me say this again to you. American Sovereignty 
Restoration Act. There's a bill now in Congress, okay, about leaving the UN. All right, that bill has been floating back and forth from different Congress started in 1998 when the Honorable Messiah Muhammad made his first oral arguments in 1998. This is when they decided it was going to lead the UN. They started this in 1998 when the Ambassador made his oral arguments at the Seoul Commission in Geneva, Switzerland. So all this started in 1998. But as a bill now is resurfaced once again now. They want all of the congressmen in the House of Representatives and the Senate to go along with it about leaving the UN. Okay? There's another bill. Now, this bill is by the Senate. It's called the Senate Resolution 652. And that had to do with the gay agenda, the homosexual agenda, okay? And that bill now has to do with the gays' human rights. Now, remember now, the United States Congress didn't care nothing about the black man's human rights or woman and child. But this bill now, Resolution 652, okay, that bill is there by the U.S. Senate about the gay human rights, but they give you civil rights. But white folks, I always said it to you guys, the homicides I've been telling you all, they never talk about your human rights. But here in this bill now, the Senate bill, 652, it talks about the homosexuals' human rights. But they don't give you nothing but so-called civil rights. Well, what about your human rights, black man? We've been saying this to you all now, all right, about your human rights. So now they're going to pass a homosexual human rights bill, but they never pass a bill for you, black man, woman, and child, nor has the Congressional Black Caucus want to pass a bill for your human rights to exist. So we're in the further ado. Now, I've got to shut this down because I've got to bring on Brother Minister here. He has a lot of information he'd like to go over with you guys. Listen very closely to what he has to say because this has to deal with everything I'm saying right here this morning. So in the further ado, I'm going to bring on Brother Minister Shakur here in the city of Baltimore, the Minister for the Honorable Science Muhammad, the Lost Foundation of Islam. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Brother Shabazz. In the name of Allah, Master Fahd Muhammad, who came to us in 1930, July 4th, and left with us our beloved messenger, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we thank the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for leaving with us the Honorable Silas Muhammad the prophet like him. Now, I believe Maya Angelou coined the phrase a phenomenal woman. But phenomenon is not just exclusive to the black woman. Let's look at the definition. Something that is observable or an extraordinary thing or person. There is a black man among us today that's a phenomenon. The whole world has been watching and observing him, especially this Caucasian white man here in America. He has been watching him ever since he stood up to put you on the right path so that you may be successful. That's what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad wanted for you. I am talking to the whole black nation, but especially the 450,000 registered believers that went astray after the death of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now you have a second chance with this phenomenon of a man, Mr. Silas Muhammad, of whom Tuesday the 21st is his birthday. This man has been working for you since August of 1977. Not just Muslims. Every black man, woman, and child are ex-slave descendants in America. We are asking every black man and woman to send to this man a donation as brother said, it is tax deductible. Make them check the money on out to the Lost Foundation of Islam Incorporated, P.O. Box 667, Red Oak, Georgia, 30272. Thank you in advance. Now, my theme today is self-identity. How you identify and define yourself. Self-determination, the process by which a person controls their own life. And reparations, compensation given for and abuse or injury. Now, the third chapter of Ecclesiastes is relevant to what I want to talk to you about today. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. 
a time to rend, a time to sow, a time to keep silent, a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, a time of peace. Mr. Silas Muhammad stood up August 21st, 1977, and went to war against an enemy of the Lost Foundation of Islam. No, brothers and sisters, not a physical war, a spiritual war, the war of Armageddon, the war of right and wrong, truth and falsehood. That every enemy was one of us that had no love for his father, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, nor the black nation. This is history, and as a result, the Lost Foundation of Islam was resurrected for the second time. Now he has stood up and spoke against our traditional enemy, this Caucasian white man, on behalf of every black man, woman, and child, ex-slaves in this country, by embarking on a task to gain dignity for us to be treated as human beings on the world stage at the United Nations in Geneva, Switzerland. He has made more than 40 written and oral interventions in 17 years of traveling to and from the United Nations. Before his intervention, we as African Americans were not recognized as human beings in the world. I know you say you were born a human being, but the United Nations didn't see you as human beings. They saw you over here as blacks with a white mind because you mimicked white people. The Honorable Silas Muhammad literally cried when he found out that you weren't even considered human beings. That you ain't had to find a place to put us in on the world stage. According to the U.S. Department of Commerce Bureau Census, the census recorded a residential population of 331,449,281 in the 50 states and the District of Columbia of April of 2020. Of that, more than 331 million, 41 plus 1 million was African Americans, a nation within a nation. Census, an official count or survey of a population. Unbeknown to you all, you are no longer African Americans in this country. You now have a political identity in America throughout the world as Afro descendants. Through the efforts of the Lost Sound Nation of Islam, the nation was constituted for the Afro descendant nation was constituted for the political benefit of Afro descendants in the diaspora. Here is a website where you can join if you so choose to do so www.afrodescendant.org slash join. www.afrodescendant.org slash join. Let me add, you're not joining the Lost Foundation of Islam. It's not that simple. You are just acknowledging your political identity in the world as human beings with God-given rights, in which you were not until Mr. Silas Muhammad made his first oral arguments on our behalf at the United Nations in Geneva, Switzerland, Subcommission for Minorities. America does not want you to accept this name, Afro descendant, because under this name you are protected with international law, which is Article 27, ICCPR, International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, which states all people have the right of self-determination. By virtue of that right, they freely determine their political status and freely pursue their economic, social, and cultural development. That is your protection slash right as a minority in the United States of America. Now, the term Afro-descendant is a name agreed upon by people representing 19 countries in the Western Hemisphere in March of 2002 in Los Honduras at the United Nations Sponsored Forum. Afro-descendants is our new political identity. Afro-descendants refer, this is the definition, refer to people who were forcibly dispossessed of their homeland, Africa, were transported to the Americas and slavery, diaspora, for the purpose of slave, enslavement, were subjected to slavery, were subjected to forced mixed breeding and rape, have experienced through force the loss of mother tongue, culture, and religion, have experienced racial discrimination due to lost ties or partially lost ties from their original identity. Now, this is my prayer to you out there and my plea to you, family. Accept your political name, Afro-descendant. It is your protection as a minority in America. The United Nations does not recognize African-American. Again, 
The United Nations does not recognize African Americans as an identity for you. America gives you so-called civil rights in which they have all but taken away from you. You are a human being with human rights, a huge difference. Civil rights only pertain to that particular government where one is domiciled. Now I want to get into this aspect of reparations and apologies. Now, in 1976, President Gerald Ford apologized to the Japanese Americans for putting them in internment camps. Here's the headline. President Gerald Ford remarks upon signing a proclamation concerning the Japanese American internment during World War II, February 19, 1976. It is the anniversary of a very, very sad day. This is him talking now in American history. It was on that date in 1942 that the Executive Order 966 was issued, resulting in the uprooting of many, many loyal Americans. Over 100,000 Japanese, pardon me, 100,000 persons of Japanese ancestry were removed from their homes, detained in special camps, and eventually relocated. We now know, we should have known then, that not only was that evacuation wrong, but Japanese Americans were and are loyal Americans. On the battlefield and at home, the name of the Japanese Americans have been and continue to be written in history for the sacrifices and the contributions they have made to the well-being and the security of this our common nation. Mr. Gerald Ford now apologized. Executive Order 966 ceased to be effective at the end of the World War II because there was no form, formal statement of its termination there remains some concern among the Japanese Americans that there yet may be some life in that obsolete document. The proclamation, now this is Gerald Ford making sure, the proclamation 4417 that I'm signing, he said, here today should remove all doubt on that matter. I call upon the American people to affirm with unhyphenated American promise that we have learned from the tragedy of that long ago experience forever to treasure liberty and justice for each individual American and resolve that this kind of error should not be made again. This was made 11.54 a.m. at a ceremony in the cabinet room in Washington, D.C., White House in 1976. Gerald Ford apologized to Japanese Americans. Have you gotten an apology, black man? Now, here's uh, reparations. Two people got reparations from America. In 1851, Congress passed the Indian Appropriation Act, which created the Indian Reservation System, which was to remove Indian tribes onto farming reservations. For that act, the U.S. finalized a $3.4 billion reparation settlement November 27, 2012, for the American Indians. Now, in 1988, President Ronald Reagan signed into law the Civil Liberties Act of 1988 which officially apologized to the internment of Japanese in the United States government and, uh, and authorized payment, listen, $20,000 each for former internees who were still alive when the act was passed. The legislation admitted that the government's actions were based on racial prejudice, war hysteria, and a failure of political leadership. Now, the Japanese was locked up in an internment camp for four years, March of 1942 to March of 1946. We've been here 467 years. We haven't even gotten an apology, let alone money. Now, in 1992, 82,219 Japanese Americans was awarded a total of $1.6 billion dollars. In 1940s, representatives of the Jewish people went to the United Nations to request that Germany be forced to pay them financial reparations as partial payment for Germany's genocide against the Jews during World War II. Those Jewish leaders also asked the United Nations to hand over to them a large section of land in the Middle East, namely Palestine, as part of the reparation due to the Jews because of the gross wrongs done to them by the Germans. The United Nations agreed to pay the Jews both money and real estate. 
even though the Palestinian, even though Palestine was already the homeland of Arabs, native to that region for thousands of years. And even though the white Jews could not truthfully prove that Palestine was their ancient homeland. On November 29, 1947, the United Nations General Assembly voted to give the Jews a substantial land base in Palestine, and the Jews subsequently established the State of Israel as a national homeland for all Jews on May 14, 1948. Now, significantly, the 1947 United Nations decision set an international legal proceeding. Land itself can be turned over to an oppressed people as reparations for wrongs inflicted upon them by an oppressive nation. Now, in my closing, the H.R. 40 bill that John Conyers submitted 32 years ago would only establish an expert commission to study the legacy of plantation slavery. Why do we need anyone to study what we went through here in America? Now, listen to this. These are your black politicians because I don't vote. They say that this bill does not give you payments or authorized payments or remedy. It only creates a commission to study the problem. If it does not offer you payments or any remedy, i.e. compensation, restitution, reparation, then why do we need to study? We already know the problem. We need the solution. Mr. Silas Muhammad had the blueprint to the solution. Self-identity, self-determination, and reparation. And you can only get that if you accept your political identity, Afro-descendants, in the Afro-descendant nation. Lastly but not least, a destination without a journey is wandering. Wandering without a destination is existing in time. Are you wandering, black man and black woman? Are you existing in time? The remedy for both is the Afro-descendant nation. I am Minister Shakur. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you all. We have a few minutes left, brothers and sisters, this morning. And uh, we're going over a lot of information, brothers and sisters. And I said to you all, don't get distracted by white world politics. I also mentioned the fact that we are beyond 40 acres and a mule. Let me say that to you again now. We are beyond 40 acres and a mule. That's right. We, this is 2022. That was the 1900s, 19th century. We went through the 20th century. This is the 21st century. I don't want no 40 acres and no mule. I want what's due to me just as the Jewish people got their reparations. There you go. That's right. Land. Offer me some land. Because I am the prodigal son of the book. I am Abraham's seed. We, the black man, woman, and child, Afro-descendants, who have come together now with a self-identity, brothers and sisters. That's right. As, as Brother Minister said, you need now a land base to govern out of to survive and write your own laws, brothers and sisters. And the Honorable Silas Holmes is the only man that's putting forth that for you today called the Afro-descendant nation. So, brothers and sisters, I'm about to close this on out and wrap this up. And do send your deductibles to the Lost Foundation of Islam, P.O. Box 667, Red Oak, Georgia 30272. Help the Honorable Silas Muhammad, the Lost Foundation of Islam, and the Afro Descendant Nation. And you're Brothers and yourself. sisters, send whatever you can, but I'm asking for $1,000. I'm asking for $1,000 because I know black folks got money. Yes, you might be cheap about it, but you got money. Okay, so send to the Lost Found Nation of Islam $1,000 payable to the Lost Found Nation of Islam, P.O. Box 667, Red Oak, Georgia 30272. I'm your host, Brother Shabazz, along with Minister Shakur. We'll see you the third Sunday of next month. Peace, love, and soul as always. Assalamu alaikum.